blossoms, and the petals are fragrant like the wrists of a mistress. Stained and ordained with a perfume prepared to meet the expectations of a lover, my heart blossoms, and the colors explode in the spectrum of ancient light, caught at the far end of the universe, perceived new, but from the beginning, what always was. My heart blossoms, and all the thorns melt and run to nothingness, for pain is not regent in a world where there are the petals and fragrance of your lips, ripe with emotion and hope. The sound of soft fingertips across the strings of a lute, strumming the memories, humming the melody of life, and I am lost in the possibilities of your presence. Pleasant peasant prayers that lead to the summit of the mountain in the distance where legends reign. Kings cannot know this brandywine, princes pass perplexed, and all the bishops seem ignorant of the nature of God when their ignorance of the crux of creation is displayed, paraded in the sudden dance of a smiling child by the fire, and I am lost in the reverent reveries of this revelation. Play for me that melody, the one you tried to teach me, you tried to reach me with when I despaired of lost love, and the angels and fairies all seemed annoying pinpoints that pricked and sticked and stole the moment that was mine, and you came for me, barefoot and ignorant, like a poet. And the fires swam into the sky, and I, I was reborn, torn to pieces and reassembled like a patchwork skirt to brush your bare legs in the summer heat and to defeat the angry winds that would come down from the mountains, mounting the horses of hoarfrost to charge your charms. I live now in more than just abstract recollections of a score of forgetful lovers who would not give me second thought were it not for the trinkets of my words they wear as bright badges as they tell their tales of the pale blue moon of memory. And they don't wear the patchwork skirt of my love or play the lute. Aphrodite does not barter her beauty for hollow promise. Wisdom girds glib eloquences in a veil of truth, the sooth that soothes us, like the blood of aloe fresh cut from a garden, where we swore we would never walk again. Jasmine. A thought slides like electric lovers across a sea of tranquility, where the dust is kicked skyward by the blue flames and boots of the explorers. I awaken from the dream sightless, paralyzed, the cold catalepsy illustrating the fear of death I had forgotten. But there is an incandescence in the darkness, and, for once, I sink back to sleep, aware of God and cognizant of the pattern in the tapestry as I await Rome, content that Damascus was no illusion, this time. From out of the city came words, small words, words like lead pellets ringing on armor, stinging on flesh, and carrying a message of rage and honor defended. The prophet spoke in broken syntax. The facts spoke for themselves in time, and he was carried to the city square to be stoned to death in accordance with the law. Morning slid over the horizon as if on rails invisible and split the night like trinity. Infinity seemed possible except for the silence of the waking world, one eye open. Mourn the night and rise. Rise to your feet and climb the hill you always said you'd climb before the end of all things, for it is upon you even in the optimism of dawn. Mourn the night and rise. Rise to your vision, rise. The afterlife is not waiting for you, but you for it, and the madness of martyrs may call it too soon. Mourn the night and rise. Spread your bastard wings and catch the feral winds that come on the sun's fire to sweep away the night into small shadow piles and corners. From out of the city came words. Final words. Words like Eden, Gethsemane, Golgotha. 
And then, and then, and then the silence, the violence of indifference. The dream came again last night. Silence begging sound like hunger or thirst begs ambrosia in cup or bowl or mug. And music swam in like a barefoot Mexican dancer, bound to the light like the smoke of fires faded as shadows hug the corners of the stonework spires that pierced the skies with hard intentions to a softened grace. Placed aloft on legs of granite and marble and brick, the echo dies and I am left to ponder another feline dancing, soft and silent, a smile of curious wonder woven in jaws that already hold me in their web of kiss and word. Cold from the senses sent soaring by your lavender claws as they approach, the cool stone by warm feet obscured, and as always, you charm the night like an eager lover to your bidding, your laugh catching on the stars that hover. <laughs>